If I were to push you out of an airlock right now, aside from being a really big jerk, what else would happen? Would you explode? Would your eyes pop out? <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching D News Today, I'm Trace. There are a lot of misconceptions about space out there, and one of the biggest is what happens when a human is put into the vacuum of space. Movies would have us believe all sorts of grotesque things, but in reality, it would be pretty boring to watch and really uncomfortable to experience. The first thing you'd notice as you hit space is the air rushing out of your lungs faster than a sneeze and far more painfully. The tiny alveoli sacs would likely be torn in the process, causing swelling and discomfort comfort, assuming that you had that problem later. Pro tip, don't try and hold your breath. If you know you're going into space, just exhale completely. After a few seconds, you are already experiencing the effects of anoxia, which is the extreme form of hypoxia, severe lack of oxygen. A study done with over 100 dogs in 1965 found that when exposed to a vacuum, their bowels and lungs evacuated immediately. So you definitely poop your pants too. That being said, you're still alive and without air, you cannot smell your own poop. So. Silver lining, yay. The second thing you'd notice is the saliva in your mouth boiling and your nostrils feeling really dry. It wouldn't boil and burn you though. That's not what boiling means. It means that it would change state from a liquid to a gas. Pressure, volume, and temperature have a direct relationship described by Boyle's law. All things being constant, at sea level, a liter of water should boil at 100 Celsius. But on top of Mount Everest, that same seawater would boil at only 71 Celsius. This means in a vacuum, water with no pressure would boil instantly, but it wouldn't be hot. Speaking of boiling, without the pressure around your skin, you'd notice some uncomfortable, probably painful tightness as it stretches and swells. Not a lot, and it definitely wouldn't burst open, but you'd totally swell up. The circulatory system is a closed loop though, so as the pressure drops because your blood vessels are expanding, the liquids in your blood would also boil into gases. This is called ebolism. Yay for Boyle's Law yet again. This would also happen in your eyes, but they'd be okay, and they would not pop out a la Total Recall. Your newfound blood gases could cause problems with blood flow. The gases could get stuck blocking blood flow to important structures, which could kill you, but that's, you know, totally a matter of chance. Either way, your swollen hands and feet will definitely have that pins and needles feeling later, assuming you were rescued. Did I forget to mention that? Okay, you're not even close to dead yet. So don't worry about rescue quite yet, not even close. At this point, a lot could happen depending on where you're floating. Stars are radiating a ton of cosmic and UV radiation, plus visible light and all sorts of other stuff. So if you're in view of the sun, you would get an instant sunburn on any exposed flesh thanks to that heavy UV exposure. Assuming you're around Earth when this befalls you, the temperature would be about 120 C in the sun and negative 230 C in the shade. But even in the shade, you wouldn't freeze because heat needs something to transfer through. Air isn't great at moving heat around, and no air even better. In a vacuum, heat can only move by radiating. So before, when you first got pushed out and your sweat boiled away, it cooled you off as it stole your heat. But your muscles are still generating heat with some of that flailing you're probably doing while you float around out there, and now that heat can't escape. So unless you touch the craft you were just expelled from to give that heat a pathway, freezing isn't really something you should be worried about. At this point, your swollen, cold body is acclimated to the environment. You're swollen, you're uncomfortable, you're poopy, and you're freaking out and to top it all off, you're covered in space hickeys where the capillaries in your flesh have burst. All of this happens in a few seconds. You might even have time to enjoy the view before you pass out. Scientists say that you have about 15 seconds from when you're exposed to the vacuum. They know this because of studies done with chimps and mistakes made by humans, both in space and in vacuum chambers and airplanes here on Earth. After 15 seconds, the deoxygenated blood from your lungs reaches your brain and bam, you pass out from lack of O2. Your blood continues to boil at this point until it balances. Your heart is probably still beating. You swell to a point until your skin equalizes with the tension outside and in the vacuum, and you just kinda hang out, floating in space. It's kinda peaceful. 
until BAM! Star-Lord slaps that mask on your face and you can breathe again. Yay! A 1965 study found that chimps exposed to near vacuum for three and a half minutes recovered easily with no apparent cognitive defects. But it was hit or miss because one chimp suffered a heart attack and another died after only three minutes. So if it's only around a minute, you'd be up and around in no time, though probably still in some pain. The dogs in the 1965 study were back to normal in as little as 10 minutes. Of course, if there's no one to save you, you would die of simple asphyxiation. So next time you're pushed into the vacuum of space, remember, bring a clean change of underwear, because you've got about 15 seconds to get that on. What do you think about all this? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more D News every day of the week. And thanks a lot. I would definitely not want to be pushed into space.